Good afternoon and welcome to Poetry Beyond the Page coming to you from Charlotte Mecklenburg Library. My name is Pam Turner. I am delighted to be here with this illustrious panel of local poets. And I want to first introduce them to you. Shane Mayner is founder of the Gorilla Poets, a creative coach, artist, live event painter, TEDx and keynote speaker, trauma-informed care instructor, poetry mentor, and national, word spoke, national spoken word poet. She is currently the spoken word and arts teaching instructor for Bihailu Arts Academy, the Harvey B. Gantt Center, Henderson High School, and Playing for Others, as well as Center for Faith in the Arts, current artist in residence. Welcome, Shane. So glad to have you. Kathy Collins, PhD, is co-founder of Charlotte Center for Literary Arts, which we call Charlotte Lit for short. She earned her graduate degree in mythological studies with an emphasis in depth psychology at Pacifica Graduate Institute. A poet and lifelong student of Jungian psychology, Kathy thrives in the in-between space from which dreams and creativity emerge. I have to say that your bio is a poem by itself. <laughs> I love it. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Blues Rogers is the Director of Creative Engagement for Blumenthal Performing Arts Center. He's won Emmy Awards, the 2010 Southern Fried Poetry Slam, and is the Slam Master and Coach of the three-time national award-winning competitive slam team, Slam Charlotte. He has shared the stage with many distinguished poets and international recording artists, ranging from Taylor Molly, Nikki Giovanni, Sonia Sanchez, and Gil Scott Heron to Outkast, John Legend, and Pink Floyd. Welcome, Blues. We're so glad to have you. Wouldn't be Poetry Month without you. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, Junius J. Ward, poet and teaching artist, is a national slam champion, an individual world poetry slam champion, author of Sing Me a Lesser Wound, published by Bull City Press in 2020. Jay currently serves as a program director for Breathe Inc. and as the vice chair on the board of the Watering Hole. Welcome, Jay. So glad to have you. So I am honored to be in your presence and so grateful. And I'm going to jump into questions. Some of them were ones that I had and some of them are ones that were shared by our attendees. The first one is, how or when do you decide that a poem's ready to share? And anybody who wants to jump in on that, please feel free, panelists, to unmute and jump in. You're going to have to call on us, Pam. We're going to be too shy. Well, go ahead, Kathy, then. <laughs> well, I, I, I am... It takes me a very long time to decide that something is ready to share. I am I am not famous for um, putting stuff out very fast. I was Pam and I were talking while it, just before the program started, and I tend not to put things out on social media. Um, uh, somebody I think it has a question later about you know what when is something considered published, and so that's part of it. Um, but I work on stuff for a long time. In fact, I've been working this week on things that I wrote ten years ago that I pulled back out and are finally ready to be worked on. I have to let things sit for a while. Um, so, but I'm curious about how others, how others feel about that. I think I work a similar, similar but different. Because um, some of the stuff, especially this 30 for 30 challenge for Poetry Month, folks will just write a poem each day and then just throw it out there. Um, you know, whether there's some editing, you know, could be to question, but um, sometimes I write a reflection of things that are happening in the world and then just post it. And I won't worry about the, uh, the critical poetry part of it. I think it's just something that I had to get out and I just write it and then I just post it. And then, you know,
you know, I let it live as, as its own. But I think some of the, the work that we consider uh, for a book or a chapbook or publishing, that, that tends to take a little bit more time, a little bit more work to, to kind of craft out. So uh, it works both ways for me. Um, yeah, the, the Facebook stuff, it just, you know, I write it and it's just out there and it, you know, it, it, it lives as it's supposed to live. I won't worry about if it's edited right or anything like that. But the other stuff that I really kind of want to take time and, and, and make sure the message is right, that could take, I don't know, a year, a couple months, just depends on the goal. Um, yeah, I, I guess I'll join in too. I, I've, I've never heard anybody answer this question where it didn't sound mythological or holistic or magical in some way. Um, like, uh, how do you know when the poem is ready, when it's done? I, you know, I don't know, the poem speaks to you and says, yeah, I'm ready right now. I, I like Kathy, I, I spent a lot of time incubating a poem before I share it. Um, and I think part of the question inherently was either share it submission wise or share it by posting or, or sharing it by doing it at open mic or a slam. And I, I think I'm always revising. So sharing it is part of my revision process a lot of times, like an open mic or a slam, even a submission. I, I think <laughs> you probably shouldn't use that as a revision process, but there's this unique clarity that comes when you send the poem off and you know it's final and then you start rethinking everything uh, and then other things become possible, you know? So <clears throat> I think I'm always revising that way. So I try not to get too caught up in spending so much time that the poem is ready to go out, but I'm too scared to send it out or I'm too scared to share it. Um, I, I try to have this, this magical mythical moment of, okay, you're ready to go out. And then as soon as it's going out, I'm already thinking of ways that I can, you know, try to make it better. I am going to be the oddball because the business creative coach in me is like, okay, in what way can this poem be leveraged? <laughs> so I know a poem is ready to go out based upon its, its usefulness and its purpose. Right. So like blues, I might post something that I think might, you know, somebody out there might need to hear that or read that today, you know, and I don't really consider it something that I'm going to turn into a huge elaborate project where I'm going to apply for a grant or put it in a book, you know, uh, so poems like that, I call them poetry doodles and I post them a lot on my Facebook. Um, but there's, there are those things that feel very urgent. There's this urgency to connect to, um, an audience with them. So those, I don't, I don't have like a leveraging plan for that's like my gift that I just want to share. That's on my heart. Right. But other poems, like I I'll know by what I want the poem to do. Do I want this to go into a book? Do I want this to turn into a show? Do I want this to become a workshop later on or its own course? Because sometimes you can have a poem like, is this content for my blog? Is this content for my YouTube channel? Like, what, what does this poem, what, how far can I push this poem to leverage it in my own business and, and to get as much use out of it as possible? Another reason why I, I don't spend a lot of time on revisions, I, I do edit, but I am so, I've got so much work that if I spent time editing every single poem, to where, uh, and, and sitting with it to the point where, you know, months or years have passed, then the, the books that I'm sitting on will never get out. So I, I try to like build this relationship with intuition as well as, as like, okay, how can I leverage and strategize the use of this poem to be effective? And at the same time, listening to my, to my gut and my heart and, and seeing, do I need to put this out here and move on? you know, or do I need to spend some more time with it? So that would be my, my process. Thanks for that. I love the ways that you're bringing in mythology and intuition and other ways of knowing um, how, you know, where the poem belongs and when. Um, thank you for all of that. Um, so, the next question we had is how do I get helpful feedback or how do I start to revise a piece of work that I've created? 
Does anybody want to respond to that? Well, I can start again. <laughs> so I love, I actually really um, love revision. Um, obviously, since I do it for so long, um, to me, it, it's the um, sort of the hard, the hard part can be having that creative moment and getting it all out. And then it becomes like a puzzle. Um, and so I love, um, I love that part of it. And I, one of our, one of Charlotte Litt's um, uh, main poetry uh, instructors, Jessica Jacobs, taught a method for keep, keeping up with the revision process that has made it a lot easier for me. And that's to keep it all in one, in one, your, each uh, version in one word doc with page, um, just clean page breaks in between. So I never lose my stuff. For a long time, I hated revision because I couldn't find it. So just being able to be organized helps a ton. Um, and of course, the big part of the revision process is getting feedback. So I think, was that part of your question, Pam? So, yeah, yeah. so um, I get feedback when I, and when I get to that, to a finished version that I think, you know, okay, I want to, now I'm ready to find out. I usually, um, the first place it goes is to uh, my co-founder, Paul Reale, even though he's not, uh, even though he's not a poet himself, well, he's becoming one. He usually gives me feedback and it's kind of good actually to get feedback from somebody who's not a poet because um, you want to see how it, if it makes sense, if it's comprehensible to the general public, I think that's very important. I don't like, um, I don't really like poetry that's too oblique, that, that is difficult to understand. So I do that and then I belong to, I'm a, a member of a, several different poetry groups, a workshopping group, one group that is, um, that we just call Poetry and Healing we get together and share our poems and it's not to critique them, but just to share them and appreciate them. Um, and we have various workshops going on time to, from time to time at uh, Charlotte Litt and I take part in those. So those are the chief ways to get feedback. And then, you know, you can always go to a teacher. I mean, sometimes, sometimes I need some help. And so I will take it to one of our instructors and say, let me know what you think. I agree with Kathy, especially like asking someone who's not a poet as well. That has helped me tremendously, especially when I'm putting out a book. Um, I think we have this myth in our heads that like only poets buy other poets work <laughs> and that's so not true. And so it, it's really a disservice to your audience when you're not getting a, a point of view that's outside of your frame or even um, from peer to peer, right? Uh, so that's, that's helped me tremendously because I, I think I know what I'm saying and that it's clear, but, <laughs> but then I'll get feedback of like, there's a lot of atmosphere in this, but I'm not really sure what the point is. <laughs> and it's like, oh, ouch, you know, but it's important. It's really important. And again, I would speak on, you know, it just depends on the purpose of the poem it depends on like which type of editor I'm going to go to for, um, reviews. Uh, I like we have a member in Guerrilla Poets called Nemo Sum and his his real name is John and he's a micro poet and he is brutal y'all when it comes to like you know you need to cut this line and cut this word and as a matter of fact just cut half this poem and <laughs> and that's essential to me because I lean more towards spoken word and there's a lot of explaining that goes on in spoken word sometimes uh, because it's not as accessible uh, on the page, right? So you can't go back and reread it. You you have to make sure that your audience understands what you're saying as soon as it comes out of your mouth. And Nemo's really good about, you know, picking up if you're repeating yourself or um, if you've already said this and said it in a different way. He's just really good about that. So if I'm going to submit a poem for publication or put it in um, on, on page for a book, right, I, I would go to him. And then again, I might go to someone else to see like, does, is this poem emotionally charged? I, I've also used Jay Ward as a, a, a resource for that too. Like, can you, can you see how serious I am about like this moment, right? By how I'm conveying it or telling the story on the page, right? So I think it depends on what type of, of revision you're looking for as well depending upon the purpose of the poem. 
I'm just going to jump in and say I co-sign on everything that Shane and Kathy said, <laughs> if that alleviates me of any responsibility. <laughs> but, I, but I'll also say that um, I, I think for me, if I'm, if I'm interpreting the question properly, I, I think some people are scared of um, getting feedback from other people um, because they're not sure if they're going to trust that feedback or if it has you know, the, the right things in mind. And, and Shane and I were just talking about this uh, two days ago that I think for me, it's really important that I get feedback from other people. And it's kind of important that I trust them, but at the end of the day, I trust myself um, as the artist. So I might get three or four different types of feedback on the same line from a few people, but I, but I trust myself in terms of seeing what, what works and what's good and, and just separating myself from the hurt feelings of, man, I really like this line though. Um, and really taking to heart what the, what the feedback is and knowing what to implement and what to kind of keep in the back of my mind is like, okay, I, I understand why they said that. I don't think I'm going to use it this time, but I understand. And, and I trust myself more than I distrust other people um, in terms of giving me feedback. So I, I'm always looking for feedback. Um, definitely co-sign on sometimes getting that feedback from people who aren't poets. Um, I've gotten some really valuable feedback on, <laughs> on poems from my fiance, who's not a poet but who will listen to a line sometimes and say, yeah, but I don't get it. I don't, you know, and I, and I, instead of saying, oh, well, it's because you're not a poet. Like, no, like you're a person and the poems are meant for people, right? Uh, so it's, it's valuable feedback just to know. Um, I also think like if you're, if, you're, uh, if you're in the oral tradition, if you're in spoken word or performance or that kind of thing, for me, feedback always comes from, um, I'm looking for, I'm looking to create moments and I'm looking to create emotion and create reactions with the way I write. And if I'm performing in front of an audience, I can, my feedback is whether or not they are reacting the way I anticipated. Um, so if, if I wrote it, if I wrote it to emote, if I wrote it for people to respond a certain way, I'm always paying attention to whether or not they are. If they're not, then I'm looking at the way I wrote it and seeing what I can fine tune and, and you know, how I can make that process better. Thank you, great responses. So I'm gonna to skip to another question down here. In your opinion, what is the purpose of poetry and why is it the form of expression you have chosen? Jay's face is cracking me up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm habitually at every question. I'm laughing at what Kathy said the first time. Like you're going to have to call on somebody because we're, we're all poets and shy and awkward. <laughs> so one of us wants to go first. None of you are shy or awkward. Come on. <laughs> I'll take that one since I've been running my mouth about purpose of poetry this whole time. So, <laughs> uh, I think we all we all have our origin points, right? Almost like uh, we like we're our own little superheroes, right? Uh, every artist has their origin point where you you started because this one this one thing happened. You you wanted to express yourself, you, or you wanted to capture something, right? And I think as you journey through your artistic career or your artistic journey, whether or not it's a career or just your own personal development, right? You're gonna run into people that are either going to project you know what they think you should do with your work and then also uh you'll see the effects of your work so for me uh the purpose came from when I saw that not only was it healing for me to write but it healed others by me sharing my experience and so once I realized that that's when I started Guerrilla Poets that's when I became on fire for it that's when I was like oh my gosh like this we can have conversations with poetry that we cannot have one-on-one uh, -on -one in, in regular language. And so for me, the deeper I go into my own po poetic journey, the more I realize that all art is like the purest form of language we have because it is infinite. It, it's, it just keeps going. Like a metaphor can continu continuously keep going, right? And it's accessible uh, no matter who you are. And so for me, I feel like every poet, there, there's a quiz that I do as part of my poetry profile assessment for my clients. And it, 
and it gives you like a more finite scope of like what kind of poet you are when it comes to like mission driven. So like there's philosopher, there's historian, there's, um, there's the activist, of course, there's, um, let's see, there's the magician and that's like capturing those moments, right. And making an audience feel a certain way, like transporting them there to the moment. There's all these different like personality types that are like archetypes that, that will tell you like paths that you could take with your poetry. And I've, I've seen that to be true because po poets do so much for the world, you know, and depending upon what your origin was and how you, how you've unfolded your poetry, that's going to lead to what the purpose of your work is. I used to get really upset at other <laughs> poets when they wouldn't be in school systems and they wouldn't be in the community until I realized, oh, not everybody's a teacher and they don't need to be in this classroom because <laughs> they cannot keep it together with these children, right? <laughs> like, um, so I had to really redefine the way I look at advocacy and, and activism so I ha and, and what it can look like. It doesn't have to be loud. It doesn't have to be extroverted. It doesn't have to be all of that, right? So I think when it comes to purpose of, of what your poems are, right, it depends on what your passions are. If you're, if you're heavy, heavily involved in the environment or animal rights or just making sure that everybody's treating each other with more grace, right? Whatever, whatever your other passions are, combining those with your poetry, I think those are, those are the doorways to joy and to fulfillment. So not everybody wants to tour. Not everybody, you know, wants to try to be poet laureate. You know, not everybody wants to slam in competition either. And I think sometimes we get pressured and we think that because this poet's doing that, we have to. But that's that's not really the case. So, yeah, I just think whatever you care about, you combine that with your poetry and you're going to feel you're going to feel on fire for it and you're going to feel fulfilled. Well, I'll, I'll go next. Well, well said, Shane. I, I, I love how you tied that to the archetypes and I hadn't hadn't thought about it that way. And sometimes I think um you know, maybe one poet embraces two or three of those, but probably not all of them. So that's a, that's a really neat way of looking at it. Um, for me, um, poetry is the purpose of it for me. And I, this isn't the purpose necessarily for everybody, but it's to transform, you know, an event um, or an experience I've had, um, ideas I've had into something that um, has meaning that is more meaningful. So it's a way, it's a process like all writing is to some degree, but it's a, um, a process of becoming aware, more aware um, of working through something. Um, it is a lot of times until I've written a poem about it, it's not finished. So um, it is, it's a, it, for me, it's a very personal way um, of just moving forward in life. Um, and when I do that well, um, this is sometimes confessional poetry gets a bad rap, um, but when I do that well, I am, I am touching the universal and other people can relate to it as well. So I think it's, it's important to be true to yourself and to your own experience and express it. And I know with this, you know, to put it, to put image and contour around the things that have happened to us, the things that we're living, the things that we care about. Um, the great thing about going like third or fourth is that I can just agree with what everybody else said. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, great answers. Um, I, I think similarly, it's, it's for me kind of translating the indescribable, like those, those moments that are either too big or too small to put into words and, and finding ways to translate them. Um, and I think the second part of that question was uh, what draws me to it or something like that. And I, 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 I spent a little bit of time thinking about that and I don't have an answer. I, I don't, I wouldn't know what else to do. Um, I feel like my mind is always translating things um, poetically, even if it never becomes a poem. Like I'm always trying to make sense of things and that always comes out in some kind of um, poetic way, you know, 
watching Game of Thrones or playing checkers or whatever. Like there's, there's something poetic happening and I, I don't know that I could cut it off if I wanted to. Thank you for that. I felt that, all of it. <laughs> um, so let me go on to another question. This one um, is, what are the characteristics of a good poem? Or what are the characteristics of a bad poem? <laughs> And does the answer depend on who's asking, under what circumstances, or when it was being asked of you? Yes. <laughs> that one made me smile. <laughs> Would you like to respond to that, Kathy? No, I'm going to let somebody else handle that one first. <laughs> Um, so so I'll, I'll go first because I can give the I can give the generic answer and then somebody else can like dig in. Um, you know, I, I think the great thing about poetry is that it is so subjective um, and, and a lot of things are dependent. Um, I, I personally am not really drawn to pastoral poems uh, that doesn't make them bad. You know, uh, there's there's plenty of outstanding work by outstanding poets. Uh, that, that are more pastoral, I might not be drawn to it. And the poems that I'm drawn to, another person might not be drawn to. So, so the use of the word bad is, is difficult to maneuver um, because there are things that a lot of people can agree are good or good, but not everyone agrees. But when we say bad, I think, I think the connotation of bad is, to me, the only time I will call a poem bad is like, I don't know if you've ever been to an open mic night or if you can imagine somebody going there just to have fun. And they, they, make, they are kind of making fun of poets by talking like this and saying that every poem sounds the same and I want the reaction because I'm talking, you know, that person isn't putting any effort in at all. Uh, and I might call that poem bad because they didn't intend for it to be good in the first place. Um, every poem can be better. Um, which means there is some level of distinction of good, right? But then we get towards bad. I think bad is so subjective, it, it's hard to quantify. However, I know somebody will quantify it and I'll hand it over uh, to them when we talk about the characteristics of, of what makes good and bad poetry for them. I would definitely, I, we were just talking about this too, two days ago, Jay. <laughs> um, and I have been on this huge kick, y'all, where I, I'm, I'm trying so hard to stop seeing things like this, all right? Like, oh, this poet's way better than me, or oh, you know, they're, they're here and I'm here, or vice versa, right? And instead looking at it like, oh, they're further along in their journey than I am. So for me, what makes, po what makes poems good or bad is how far have you stepped into your style? So instead of seeing it like this, see it like this. Like what another poet might seem like a powerhouse, right? Whether that's on stage or on the page, you know, and they're just getting published left and right. And they're getting all these opportunities and you're like, imposter syndrome. But really, instead of like comparing yourself to that poet, it's the only, the only difference between successful poets and non-successful poets is because they have stepped into their strengths and become like more into who they are as a poet, right? And they've stepped into their voice and they've stepped into their style. If alliteration is your thing, how can you make it to where it's not cliche and, and you know, to where everybody's expecting it? If you're a, if you're a poet who rhymes, can you surprise your audience with the rhyme instead of sounding doc like Dr. Seuss, you know, how can you take your strength, your natural strength and make it to where it, it becomes like this thing that is, is in like your audience is in awe of it, right? Because you have stepped into that and then you grow around that, you know? So for me, it's, it's not, it's not good or bad. It's more, are you beginner or how are you seasoned, you know? Um, so you could have a poet that's incredible on the page and, and just make me want to bang my head against the wall when they get up to the mic. Does that mean that they're bad? No, you know, and, and vice versa. I've, I've gone to shows and picked up 
spoken word poets books and been like oh honey no and like set, <laughs> set the set the book down because like you don't know what you're doing with your line breaks you know and it's it doesn't mean that that either so sometimes that's a factor as well like are they expanding and you know anytime you expand your 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 medium as I would call it right like I might be excellent at watercolor but when I pick up oils it might be a puddle right it doesn't mean I'm a bad artist it just means I haven't learned that medium yet so sometimes that happens too where you know you think oh when a poet does something and it's just because it's awkward and new for them it doesn't mean that it's bad. I think every poem, my poetry mama, Devonna Wyatt, used to say that there's no such thing as a bad poem, just a poem that hasn't found its audience. And that has always stuck with me. I think we get into good and bad when we start playing the comparison game. And if we could just stop all that and, and take note of what poets were drawn to and why, then we can look at, okay, now I'm finding my style and I'm finding my voice. So yeah, instead of here, here. Well said, both of you guys. And so I'll, I'll pick up on that last thing that you said, Shane, and that's it. I, I don't think there are, um, well, there, if there are any bad poems out there, it's there, they come from people who don't read poetry. And so one of the, th one of the things that drives me crazy is when, when people write their first poem and wanna publish it immediately and they've never even read another poem. So in order to, in order to be a good poet, whatever style you prefer, you know, whatever you're working in, you've got to read and listen. Um, you know, so if you're doing spoken words, you've, you've gotta be out there listening. You've gotta be out in the open mics. And of course, traditional poetry, you need to read some too, out loud because Poetry is an oral form. Even, even those of us who sweat our line breaks a lot, <laughs> it, re it really is. So read, you should read more poetry than you write. Thank you for saying that. That's common advice for writers is if you're feeling like it's a writer's block, read more, yeah. Thanks for saying that. Anybody else want to jump in on that or we'll move to another question? All right. So I have a question about publishing on social media. So what should I be careful about when publishing a poem on social media? And how would I prevent someone from stealing it? And then a related question to that is if I post it, then does that mean it's been published? Anybody wanna jump on that? I wish we had a lawyer <laughs> to tell us the answer to that. I, I, I'll, I'm gonna put in my two cents I, I, because when I submit um, poems to journals, often they say they can't, they cannot be published anywhere, even online, including a blog. So I, I tend not, I don't do that. Um, and I don't often, though I did just submit a poem that is political and current. Um, usually I'm not writing stuff that needs to be out there immediately, but I understand the impulse to do that if you are, if you're writing about current events. Um, sometimes I think some of you guys were talking earlier about going ahead and put there, you have kind of different types of poetry, some that you want to get out there right away and some that you sit on and work on. So, um, just know that I think, I think if you, if you're getting into this world, if you put something, if you publish something online, you may have a hard time put, have, finding a home for it in a journal or, or entering it into a contest. So just be aware of that. But I, I'm curious about how the others of you think about it, because I, I'm not sure that I know. I, I agree. Um, I agree as best practice. Like if, if you want to publish the poems in a journal or something like that, I do think as best practice, you probably shouldn't post it on social media. Or if you do, uh, do it in a private group. Like if there's a 30 for 30 that is a private group that's not published to the rest of Facebook mm -hmm. or, or something like that, I think that might be okay. Um, most, most publishers, not all of them, not all of them specify, 
but even if they don't specify, they, they probably would prefer that it not be published that way. Um, now, part of the question was, is that published? I mean, it, it is technically, if you put a video on YouTube or if you post something online, I mean, that, that is published, it can be self-published or published through the internet or social or whatever. But if you mean, if you mean published in terms of like a literary publishing, it's, it's not a, well, I mean, it's not, it's not a literary credit that you would probably attribute to the poem. And then as far as stealing, um, I don't know. I've, I've, never been, I've never been worried about the stealing aspect of it. Um, there, there are people who have five books out and somebody steals from the book that's there um, and sends it into a, to a journal, you know? Um, I, I wouldn't be that worried about people stealing the poem. Uh, technically, you have a copyright as soon as, it, as soon as it exists as yours, you have a copyright technically. Mm -hmm. And if you post it online, you also have a digital footprint for that. So I, I wouldn't be as worried about people stealing it, but I would consider what future you want for that poem. If you do want it to exist and publish in a journal somewhere, then I would, I would definitely be wary about posting it. Um, online as a, as a, you know, in a social network. I'll say this too, like you can, you can also do a search on social media and, and then take that post down too. Cause when I was a youngin and I was all eager, I posted everything. And then I was like, oh, they, I'm not that important. It's not like they're going to find it. I'm like my page is private. No, they found it. And they legit told me like, this was already posted on your social media. We can't publish it. And I was like, how did they know? How did they, <laughs> they know though, y'all, they know. So if you have a poem that you have already posted, go back and take it down before you submit it. Um, also, I've been playing with um, asking a few publishers, does it matter if, like, let's say you posted the first version of that poem, but now the poem kind of looks completely different after the revisions, right? Does that still count? And that depends on the publisher. Some have said yes, some have said no. So just, just good practice that if you're going to submit it for publishing, just don't, just don't, <laughs> just don't. <laughs> it's easier. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'd be I'd be really excited if somebody actually wanted to steal my work. I agree. That's very <laughs> flattering to think someone would want to steal it and put their name on it. Well, thank you for those thoughtful answers. That was that was great. Um, so I want to move to what is your favorite way to get your poems out in the world, whether that's through a book or a journal or a live performance. I'm just interested in hearing what moves you to share a poem and what ways. Shane, you've got the big screen. You should go. <laughs> The pressure's on. Um, okay, so I, I, I love publishing. I, I love working with a publisher. I've, I've had books with a publisher and also self-published. Between the two, because I've, I've you know, entrepreneur, business mindset, and I'm, I'm an artist as well, I love self-publishing just because I get to do all of the things that I love to do. I get to build the launch for the book. I get to market it. I get to go do photo shoots to celebrate it and also use that in the promos. I get to um, reach out and get awesome reviews from poets and design the cover and the back and make sure that the inside looks good to where I'm not going to be that, that poet where they pick the book up and they go, oh, honey, no, and then put it down. Like, I love trying to figure out how can I make the book success successful and I also love like launches I just how can I do the show based around this book without it being boring and without it being like just another book reading where you come hear my poems and then I sign some books and then we all go home. Like, no, how can I incorporate all the other artists in Charlotte? How can I get visual artists involved and dancers? And now, you know, we've got this whole production going on. 
I love little gifts in the pre-sales, like for the book that I'm getting ready to launch this month. I was like, oh, you know, it's about wanderlust, right? And all these poems about being on the road. Can we, can we add in like fuzzy dice for people who, you know, order the pre-sales? Can we, I, I went and ordered maps online. I don't know if y'all know this, but you can get maps for free through the state. And I ordered all these maps from like Texas and North Carolina and Tennessee. And that's what the books are going to be wrapped in. So I love that aspect. I love, I, I love the whole creation of the process of, of, going through the poems and turning it into this, this big production. Right. I, and, and it being like a celebration of the work. I think that's what excites me is that, is that it becomes like this, this celebration. And I just can't do that with a publisher a lot of times because they have more control than I do sometimes even over the book cover. And I'm like, as a graphic designer, I'm over here like, mm, can we, can we negotiate this book cover? <laughs> like, like mm, please. <laughs> so yes, for me, I, my favorite way is launches because I also get to do spoken word too. I get to perform the pieces on stage. And that to me is always, I, I love being on stage because I feel, it feels like I can surrender to the poetry and become the poem on stage. And I just feel so amazing when I get off stage. I just do, I just, I know something beautiful and holy is happening on that stage every single time I get off it. And I, and so I get to do all of it when I launch a book. I feel very lucky to have been at one of your book launches where you had all of those helmets going on. That's, that feels really special as now with us coming out of this pandemic year of not being able to be together and do that. Um, yeah, that's a beautiful thing. Anyone else want to talk about how they like to get their poems out in the world? I want to hear from Blues. I don't want to put him on the spot there. Um, Though I just did. <laughs> it's a little different for me, uh, depending on what the poem is. When I was working with the Hornets, that was very fun because it was we were talking about arenas and a lot of stuff online. So there's a lot of eyes, but you're not writing for a poetry audience per se. You're writing for a very specific audience, and that's sports. And they could they could give a damn about the poetics of things. They just want to be inspired and want to be pumped up. So your writing tends to be a bit different. It's very challenged can't be so wordy like you know you can't be too flowery because it's they're not there for that you have to get to the point you have to get to the issue you have to put the urgency inside of the work so that's very fun um, and then when the Panthers won the NFC championship you know you get to see your work go up on that big screen um, through the voiceover through the, through the poetics of it so it's it's a different scale um, as opposed to some of the books I've done. Um, but I think there's more heart from the actual publishing of books because people want that for that specific reason that it's your work and your words and your ideas, not necessarily for a team. It's what it's about you. So um, it's fun. It, it's really fun. Um, and to backtrack to the publishing of a work, the Michelle Obama poem that I did, it, it went viral. I say viral like this because I have friends who do, do in the millions. I was just like 40,000, but I was proud of that. <laughs> um, it was a point where it was a proud moment when someone posted the poem without giving me any credit. So I guess that was like stealing, but I was like, yeah, okay, I've made it. So <laughs> it's like very weird, but yeah, I, I think it's in those moments when you put the when you put stuff out there. I'm very if out of the group. I'm I'm probably more social media minded, leaning more that way, which is how I do things. Um, because it takes me a long time to get a book together, um, and I'm so used to having all this work stacked up. But I'm just like, I gotta let it go. Uh, I, because I, I come from, 
I'm a hip hop artist and I've sat on three albums that we didn't put out because we had to do all these things before the album and the music could go out. And a couple of years go by and the music's not even relevant anymore. And now you have all this really creative talent and work that you put into it. And it's, it's pretty much just sitting in your room or a computer collecting dust. So I've learned to just be like, you know, some things you gotta let go, some things you gotta just put out there and see what happens. So for that, for that part of it, I like that. I like to just be able to create something and throw it out there. Um, I, I just recently, like yesterday, signed a book deal. So I'm sitting down with this process of this thing. And again, the, the idea for the book is three or four years old. <laughs> so it's finally got to the point where I can put it out that way. But yeah, I, I enjoy like change. I enjoy the process of, of creating all that. I just, I can be impatient because I don't like to see things go to waste. And I think what we all do is a resource to folks. And sometimes we can get a little selfish with ourselves and our resource goes to waste. And, you know, someone might need it in the time that they do. But it varies. It varies. Thank you for that. Yeah, it's important to remember how some things are time sensitive and may have the time can pass and they could be lost. So can I speak to that real quick too, Pam? Please. Like, yes. Well, we've lost so many poets this past few years. Mm -hmm. Like, please stop sitting on your work. That's what scares me every single day. Like when people ask me, whoo, am I getting emotional right now? Don't Shane, get, keep it together. Mm -hmm. Um, the idea, right, that I could die and these 13 books just never go anywhere. The, 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 just think, just think about someone coming into your house and cleaning out that house to put the house on auction or to give it to your kids and that work never seeing the light of day. I just, that, that is what keeps me up at night. And that's what pushes me to get it out there, regardless of credits be damned. You know, like I, that terrifies me. Like, and it's, it's not really an ego thing. Like, you know, does someone 50 years from now really need to read this poem about a stoplight? Maybe, but at least it's out there for them to, if they need it, <laughs> like for someone to stumble across it on the internet or wherever. Like I have even gone as far y'all as to appoint someone to where if I pass, all my poems go live online just and 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 there it is you know because what am I gonna need you know book sales for at that point you know <laughs> like but at least it's there right but like that idea if you want to be motivated just think about that just think about somebody coming into your house and just throwing all them papers away you know but putting the laptop up cleaning it out and putting it to the goodwill store think about that and that'll make you move that'll make you do something yep now it's getting real <laughs> that's true ah uh, that makes me want to go to this question and this may be our last because we've just got about eight minutes left um, and thank you to Bernice for submitting this question. Is poetry like love best when shared with others? That feels like a natural follow-up to what you were just saying. Well, it does feel like one. I'll, I'll, answer, I'll answer that by way of kind of answering the last one too. My favorite way to, um, I guess I'm, you know, I, I like small, I like small groups and I, I you know, I do readings very occasionally, um, group, big group readings, but really what my favorite way of getting my poems into the world is within small groups. So whether those are, um, you know, workshop groups or my poetry and healing group or just a group of friends, because the poem once, um, once response, and by that I don't mean applause or even purchasing the poem, but it wants conversation around it. And so my favorite way of, of sharing what I have is to be with a small group of people who can talk, who can talk about it and I can talk about the, with them about their work too. 
I would agree with that as well. Um, we, I, I just a month or two ago, maybe two months ago, started uh, the IDLA workshop group where poets come in and literally workshop their movie work and you know facilitator facilitator come in and, and run a workshop but it's and it's not open mic like that's the thing I stress like this isn't an open mic don't expect to come up here and read your poems like the Catholic said your poems going to get a response and the critiques there it'll be critiqued but it also have conversation around you know why you wrote the poem and then we reflect on our own experiences that the poem is brought up and inside ourselves so it, it's it's really meant to gather people in the spirit of love around a passion that we all love to do um it's just giving us an excuse to to, to get together and, and do this thing i think that's what you know most small groups and workshops are, are, are doing it's just giving us an excuse to write and to share and you know, for this, this, if this pandemic and, and quarantine has taught us anything, is we are writing a bunch of things and sharing it with zero people. <laughs> and so if we can get it out and share that love, and, and you don't realize how much you miss it until you get around folks and share it. You're like, you know what? This poem is great, but I really missed you guys. Like, I missed you all. I just miss people. So, yeah, I, I, I can completely echo what Kathy is saying is, is, is that. We need that love, and the love is the words, but it's even more so that human connection. Yes, 100%. I was thinking before we started that the only thing better than being with you guys on Zoom would be is if we actually were in the same room. <laughs> it would be awesome. Next year. <laughs> yes. So we've got a few more minutes. Did anyone else want to speak to that question or just to anything else about poetry or love or the world? I want to piggyback off of all of that too. Like one of my favorite things ever is after a show or no matter what it is, right? Whether it's like an open mic or workshop or a slam, whatever, a feature is the conversation that happens outside of the venue of all the poets hanging out and just talking about art and life and what's going on. Like that is what I miss the most from, you know, just what the pandemic has done. So and I've seen that transfer over even into like the Zoom realm. Like there's a group that we were fortunate to get together with for some uh, poets that are in New Mexico and they open up Zoom rooms at night just so poets can just be together and no one really has to share their work or anything. They could just have those like meaningful, deeper discussions around the work and, uh, and about what it means to be a poet right and what how our lives are and and some of the things that that come up for us that don't necessarily come up for other people and i, I miss that i miss being outside of petras and being outside of you know even the blumenthal and just talking to poets before getting up on stage or after i, I do i miss i miss that connection that conversation but i would yeah that's all i wanted to say about it Um, I, I want to say uh, congratulations and shout out to Blues on this book deal. Um, mm -hmm. Just hearing about that, that's exciting. Uh, congratulations. Um, and then I guess uh, to kind of, I don't have a, I don't have an Love being poetry, being like love. Um, I do think like love, it's intimate. And like love, it has to start with you first. Um, so sharing it with others is, is the, the end goal, the end result for some, um, but it still has to start with the first, we you know, with the person, with the, the poet writing it, and that, that love has to display that way. Um, yeah, but thanks, thanks everybody for joining. Thanks for inviting uh, me, Pam, and thanks for uh, allowing me to be uh, with this group of, of, uh, of panelists. Uh, this has been great. Congratulations, Booth.
Yes, 100%. Congratulations. This has been amazing. I'm so glad we decided to record it because I know I'm going to watch this again. <laughs> so I want to say thank you to everyone for joining us. And I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and then we'll take a few moments to just talk casually. Thank you.